What is the cloud? Basically, it's the concept of distributed computing as it applies to a large cluster or multiple cluster of servers. A great example of the cloud at work is Netflix. Netflix rents servers from Amazon's cloud to run their video streaming service. The amusing thing there is that Amazon also has a video stream service which includes free movies with Amazon Prime, so they can do it much cheaper than Netflix can. This is one of the large problems Netflix is facing going forward, but I digress. That's not why we're talking about the cloud. Amazon and Microsoft rent cloud computing to customers from their giant server clusters. Microsoft's cloud computing service is called Azure, and they intend to integrate it with the Xbox One to increase its ability to play games. Now, to people who aren't knowledgeable about the cloud, this sounds great, but the impact the cloud could have on gaming is pretty negligible. In this episode of The Rant is Go, I'm going to go over the different applications suggested by Microsoft for using the cloud, and at the end I'll summarize what's really motivating their integration of the cloud with the Xbox One. Here are the basics of what would happen when a game tries to utilize the cloud for game code. The Xbox One would first have to send the intended data to be worked on to Azure. This could be the geometry of the environment, player behavior, or whatever data set they feel the cloud could enhance. Ping is the amount of time it takes a signal to go from your console or PC to a server and then come back. The ping with Azure is, from what my research shows, 45 milliseconds or so. This is slightly better in Europe, but I'm going to use 45 milliseconds as a working figure for this episode when in reality, the internet isn't so clean cut. This figure is actually kind of optimistic for real-world applications. Azure would then process the information and send it back to the X-Bone. In order for this to be possible in a game, the publisher will have to rent that usage from Microsoft. The important thing to note here is that they pay for the usage, not the availability, and that's why the cloud is popular in business circles. If you aren't burning up the charts when it comes to the demands on your server, then it's not costing much at all compared to the cost of buying and maintaining your own servers. Lastly, the amount of time there is between the screen updates on a 60 frame per second game is 16.6 repeating milliseconds. For a 30 frame per second game, it's about 33 and a third milliseconds. Everything about a game's world, including physics, audio, and lighting, all have to be processed in that amount of time. Now that the basics are down, let's look over some of the usage cases Microsoft has been spewing. I I mean spreading. I mean telling us. Telling us about, yeah. Okay, so as I mentioned before, pinging the Azure server takes about 45 milliseconds. This is about one and a half times the amount of time you have to process lighting in a 30 frame per second game, and about three times the amount of time you have for a 60 frame per second game. You wouldn't have enough time to ping the server every frame, let alone ship all the per-frame data over to it so the Azure can calculate the lighting. The result of attempting something like this would be a game where the brightness itself lags and is jumpy. You would have the lighting always lagging behind the game at five full frames or so. Though I've heard ideas about pre-rendering volumetric lighting for foggy areas and whatnot, I don't think that that would result in good-looking lighting by next-gen standards. They could make a bitch in Silent Hill 1 remake, though. Currently, developers pre-calculate a great deal of physics for events that are too complex to be processed on your console or PC. That opening sequence in Portal 2 and Uncharted 2's House Ripping Apart segment are both moments in video games where real-time physics and pre-calculated physics are running simultaneously to give things a grand scale. The only reason you wouldn't pre-calculate your physics for an event like this and ship it on the disc or over the internets is if the player needs to interact with it or it's somehow very dynamic. If the player interacts with it directly, the latency of calculating it on the cloud and then having it interact with the player would be terrible, just like the lighting scenario. Only if it played out like an uninteractive cutscene would it matter. Even in that case, pre-calculated is a more cost-friendly way to go. If the name wasn't enough to let you know that this was stupid marketing horseshit, then allow me to tell you. This is some stupid marketing horseshit. We have had racing games that generate ghost data for two decades now. All the cloud is doing for the drive avatars in Forza 5 is propagating them out to your friends, which isn't anything revolutionary. It's like if Little Big Planet or Mega Man Powered Up automatically downloaded levels that your friends made. Little Big Planet could have done something like that feasibly, which goes to show that this instance of cloudliness is nothing radical or new. Titanfall is using Azure for dedicated servers. 
This is pretty cool. Respawn Entertainment noted that the use of Azure alleviates their inability to predict which region the game will be popular in. When players go to start a match, it'll spin up a server close to them. That's when problems start happening. If the player is in the Southeast United States and the 11 people who join his match are in the Northwest United States, then the only person it's really helping ping-wise is the first person who started the match. Though they say that's how it's going to be implemented, they could change it to a system that figures out the placement beneficial to the most players and go with that. That would fix that problem, but another slight issue is that Azure servers aren't available in every country. Microsoft is spinning up some servers in Australia, which is good and all, but to those outside of the small amount of countries with Azure servers in them, this solution may end up being worse than player-hosted servers. The AI being processed in the cloud would have to be things that aren't directly interacted with by the player, unless it was a turn-based game. In order for the AI to be both complex and reacting to what you, the player, do to it, it would have to have a long enough latency between your actions and its actions to send all the data and process it. This is a really cool application, but I'm going to keep this section short by saying... If the future of games is turn-based with ridiculously complex AI, then I'll eat a bag of dicks. Those usage cases are the major considerations for the cloud put forth by Microsoft. I just have a couple more things to say on the topic before I'm done. It's obvious why Microsoft chose to make the cloud a centerpiece of their marketing PR for the Xbox One. They have a weaker console by a significant amount. To divert the conversation away from that, they want to point at something sort of exclusive to their platform that not a whole lot of people are knowledgeable about. Enter Azure. I'm sure Microsoft intended to integrate Azure into the Xbox One to begin with because there are some slight benefits. But the real reason it became a centerpiece for their PR is they have a significantly weaker console. The bizarre thing about this is not only does Sony already use the cloud for the PS3 and Vita, for example, how Hotline Miami syncs saves across PS3 and Vita, but Uncharted 2 and 3 already use Amazon's web services heavily in their multiplayer components. It's ridiculous how Microsoft acts like they're the only ones offering features via the cloud when really anyone could go to Amazon and rent their cloud to do the same thing on their video games. That is, of course, if Microsoft allows it. They may have something against using Amazon's cloud services in their technical requirement checklist. If they do allow it, then it's likely we'll see implementations of the cloud utilizing Amazon's web services because at least it's consistent across all platforms. For those interested, Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 use the cloud for matchmaking and saving customization options. It's not super intense or game-changing, but it does make it a much smoother process than it would be otherwise. And really, that's all we should expect from the cloud as it pertains to gaming. Slightly improving not-so-crucial elements of the games we play. Or in other words, NOT A THING YOU SHOULD BUILD YOUR MARKETING HYPE AROUND OR YOU LOOK LIKE AN ASSHOLE!